Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Let's Talk ABM with me, Declan Mulkeen, CMO of account-based marketing agency, Strategic ABM. ABM is one of the hottest B2B strategies right now, helping companies to win, grow and retain their most important accounts. This podcast allows me to spend some time talking to account-based marketing leaders about their ABM programs and share their insights with other B2B marketers, wherever you are on your ABM journey. So today I'm joined by Nancy Harlan, who's the Global Account-Based Marketing Manager at Click. Nancy, thanks so much for joining us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So Nancy, obviously we've been speaking a little bit before, talking about ABM and talking about your ABM journey there. But just for the audience, very, very briefly, tell us something that we don't know about your company and perhaps, you know, what is the problem that you're trying to solve? So Click is a data analytics and integration company, um, and we really help customers free their data, all of their data sources. We help them find it, categorize it, make sure it is um, consistent and clean. We help them understand their data, and then most importantly, we help them action based on data. So our target customers are Fortune 1000 companies, that are very much focused on digital transformation uh, and leveraging data to actually run their business. So uh, that's what we do at Click. So it's all about the data. All about the data. All about the data. So when we were talking before, you you were telling me a little bit about your ABM journey there at Click, and I believe it started some seven or eight years ago. Um, wow. And I recall that it started through a whole kind of key account management, key account marketing approach that kind of then evolved into into ABM. Tell us a little bit more about that journey. So I actually was hired at Click to to help solve a problem. So we were finding that our sales organization was landing in large enterprise accounts, Mm -hmm. um, but wasn't expanding and that there was a lot more share of wallet we could have been capturing if we were supporting the seller in finding those growth opportunities. So that's really where account-based marketing started. We started um, with myself and one individual, and we focused on about 50 accounts in the U.S. Um, Now we are actually expanded. We focus on about 150 accounts, um, and they are located globally. Uh, So it is our top customers where we believe that we have an opportunity to drive significant revenue, not just in the next year, but in the next several years. So we really focus on understanding who that customer is, where they are in the journey with Click, and how we can drive additional revenue out of them. So we spend a lot of time finding new users, establishing new executive relationships, uh, engaging across the enterprise to drive awareness for what Click is and the value it can deliver in that particular company. So let's dig a little bit more into that point you mentioned there about salespeople, that you mentioned that the sales teams there were fantastic at winning accounts, Mm -hmm. but the kind of classic problem is you've won that account, now how do you land, or you've landed rather, how do you expand? Right. And that's it. I mean, I've experienced that problem in many, many companies that I've been in before, um, where we all, all celebrate those great wins. But then suddenly we think, well, it's, it's not as big as we'd like it to be. Or, or why are we not doing more revenue? So how, how is ABM in particular? How is that solving that problem? So as part of the, the planning process with the seller, we really do focus on particular areas of the business where they are currently not established. So think about um, large enterprises that have multiple divisions. You know, maybe we landed in a particular division and now we want to take our success and package up that success and, and apply it to a new division. It can be as simple, and this is the great thing about Click, it can be deployed anywhere within the organization. It, it can be as simple as we landed in supply chain and we're showing great results in supply chain, but why can't we get into marketing, finance? Um, human resources? How can we penetrate those new areas of the business? And fundamentally for us, it's about, you know, making sure that we're documenting the ROI the customer is currently experiencing, but then sharing that story to new areas and can, and educating that, that new area on what Click can do for them. Um, so that's really how we kind of help them expand. We also have a layer where we really focus on new executive relationships. So this is not just the seller, but we leverage our own Click executives 
and we try and align our CFO with the, the, the customer CFO just to talk about how we use Click to manage our finances and then relate that to the customer, establish executive relationships so that they can really start to understand the value prop that we deliver. So that's, that's the way we try and initially expand. There's a lot more that we do, but we really do kind of align to where have we landed? What is our success story? And how do we penetrate that, move that success story out to other areas of the business? So you're kind of going deeper into the organization and then going wider as well. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think one thing I really liked there was that, and it reminds me of my, um, my marketing uh, when I was at business school, talking about the whole kind of um, bow tie approach versus diamond approach when you have a bow tie it's just one contact one contact and obviously with diamond approach you've got multiple people in the case you mentioned there with your cfo cfo cto cto coo coo that kind of that kind of approach where you've got multiple contacts within both organizations coming together right so so let's go a bit more into the into your actual abm program there and i understand that you're running all different types of abm uh, in terms of one to one one to few one to many can you can you maybe kind of unpeel a little bit of that for us and tell us a little bit about how they differ uh, what perhaps you're doing a little bit different in each type of program yeah so i i have to be really candid with you this is one of my hot items i believe account based marketing is truly one to one I believe that's what account-based marketing is. One to few, it, for me, is either horizontal marketing or, or industry marketing. And one to many is just really good B2B marketing, right? So for me, a true account-based marketing is creating a unique message, a unique value prop that is aligned to the customer's opportunities and challenges and how Click can support them in addressing those opportunities and challenges and creating unique content and getting into that organization uh, one-to-one with that unique story. So that for me is one-to-one. And we do that for uh, a small set of accounts here at Click where that customer experience is highly tailored, highly focused on who they are um, and um, is really driven to help them support goals. One-to-few we really think about um, how, you know, if I can deliver, a, a, for example, a line of business campaign. So talk about how Click can solve issues and help drive opportunities in finance. Again, we'll use that as an example. Why does that have to be just in my top customers? I can run that across all of my customers. So I think about line of business campaigns and industry campaigns as that one to few ABM. So the story is more relevant who, to who the target is. It's not unique like one to one is, but it's more relevant. It's about who they are, how they can use Click within their part of the business. Um, and then one to many ABM is really just about scale. Some people confuse that with personalization. That, that's, that's not ABM. You know, it really is about trying to find that relevant um, message, whether that's in a particular territory um, or within, again, the industry or the use case and driving that message out beyond um, a, a unique set of accounts. So that's the way I think about it. For me, true account based marketing is one to one unique value prop into that account, really, really meaningful message to the customer, the account, but also the individual you're targeting. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very good definition actually. And I'm, I'm writing literally a, a blog, which we're publishing tonight around this very subject. So it kind of aligns very closely to what you're saying in terms of hyper-personalization at the one-to-one -one level, uh, vertical industry at the one-to-few, and then you can run one-to-many at a, at a persona level or at a kind of a business challenge level at the one-to-many. But then you can touch, you know, total addressable market, your clusters, and then your obviously most important, most valuable accounts. Let's just then talk about that kind of one-to-one -one approach then, because obviously insights is a huge part of the success of a one-to-one -one, um, ABM program, right? And I know that the insights that you do there is uh, really kind of move the dial in terms of the success of your programs. Can you talk to us a little bit about that in terms of what? It, why do you see there's such a, uh, a worthwhile investment um, kind of commissioning insights? And then what do you get from the insights to actually inform your campaigns? So uh, this is something that we actually really put a process around this year. 
where uh, we're using third party, we're, we're using information that the seller has and the customer success manager has, and then the ABM or has from previous years that they've been engaged. But we went to a third party this year to really look at the particular account and understand what's happening in their industry, how they sit in their industry with regards to you know, particular success factors. Um, again, really documenting their opportunities um, and, and actually focusing a lot on their hurdles to success. Um, and so this third party brings this information to us and it's amazing that when you bring that information and layer it over what you already know or think you know, in some cases, think you know, um, it really can help form a single set of goals that the entire organization is centered around. Because it, I look about last year, last year we had you know, a, a strategic account plan from the seller. We had a customer success plan from customer success. Uh, for the same account. And we had an account-based marketing plan for the same account. So, so we, there was three plans that everybody was going off and doing good work. What this intelligence brings together are those three factors. And everyone then really aligns at what and establishes what is the goals of our organization in general. What are we all trying to accomplish? So we established a single set of goals for that company. And, and from there, the customer success plan is driven out, the strategic selling plan is driven out, and the account-based marketing plan is driven out. And so we're constantly looking and revising those plans, but we're ensuring that we're always marching towards those goals that we, we've established as the single source of focus on what we're going to do in this account this year. So would you say that the, the insights that you do are kind of uncovering nuggets that you can use then and deploy as part of your campaign messaging, your content strategy? Exactly what we do. So once we establish those goals, we then take those insights or, um, and we actually develop content around them, you know, whether it's an infographic or it's um, you know, a, a white paper or, or some kind of thought leadership content. We actually use those that the, the investigative um, information that is delivered to us to inform and to ensure that the message we're delivering makes complete sense to that target in that in that account. So it's kind of the classic, you know, show me, you know me. That the 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 account is clearly seeing that you that you know them better than perhaps they even know themselves. Right, and it's not being just delivered through the account-based marketing programs. It's you know, the, the seller is now on board and going to be consistent with the message. The customer success manager is on board and is going to be consistent with the message. So where we're, we look, we have become a fully aligned organization with all the resources that we want to bring to bear to drive that share of wallet. We're very consistently delivering a message to support that process. Yeah, so it just sounds like you've got a lot of the kind of the key the key parts all lined up, and everything seems to be aligned and working working wonderfully there for you. Um, talking about you know ABM and and you mentioned there about you have, you've got a very clear opinion about one to one versus one to few versus one to many. I think you've also got a very strong opinion around ABM tech vendors as well. Um, when we were talking before we were chatting around this area, I'd love to hear your thoughts um, about how you see, because obviously there's been such an investment in ABM tech over the course of the last few years, and there's a, a myriad of ABM tech out there, and people don't know what to buy, what to use, and, and there's an awful lot of you know talk. T tell us what you think about this. So uh, I am. Um, uh, if you ask any of my current ABM tech stack partners uh, here at Click, they would tell me that Nancy Harlan likes to break glass. <laughs> so um, I, I challenge my ABM partners to make sure that they're actually able to efficiently and effectively deliver one-to-one -one ABM. Um, I, I will give you an example, and I want to be really clear. We have a great relationship with LinkedIn, and we have are doing amazing one-to-one -one ABM using LinkedIn. Um, but it was really hard to actually make that happen because traditionally, um, that when you're doing display or targeted advertising in any way, 
you know, there's there's the traditional, they, they have to have a big volume of universe in order to get the impressions, in order to, you know, bring you down to the funnel. And, and I had to kind of upset the apple cart and say, don't use those old metrics. I, I don't want to be looking at a huge universe. I want to look at one account. And so I want to be able to attack one account with one-to-one display um, and ads to really drive engagement. And that ad is completely unique to that customer and sometimes can be unique to the individual I'm targeting. So, you know, trying to get the ABM platform vendors or, or vendors who deliver ABM to really consider how they're going to deliver one-to-one is really, really important. Um, we have used demand base. We use Six Sense um, for both display. And, you know, it really comes down to when you're looking at ABM platform partners, you need to make sure that it's, if they're delivering, they're able to efficiently and effectively deliver one-to-one because, you know, one-to-few, one-to-many is just B2B marketing. It's not really, again, my passion, one-to-one, which is ABM. So we've, we've had great experiences. I see that the tech partners actually getting there. I see um, both demand base and Sixth Sense have made huge investments in really trying to get me to the point where I can deliver one-to-one very efficiently and effectively. So really pleased with both those partnerships and how they have evolved. But in the process, I've made them uncomfortable because I really wanted to do one-to-one, not one-to-few and one-to-many. Well, I'm, I'm delighted that you're pushing them because obviously that's also frustration for many people out there, including ourselves as an agency, is this kind of, obviously the tech vendors have come along and, and, and their message has been, hey, you can target thousands or tens of thousands of accounts, which clearly is not, it's kind of putting an ABM filter on something which is not ABM. Um, and ABM obviously trying to- it's a shiny penny right now, right? Everybody wants to do ABM. It's the, it's the talk and marketing. Um, and I think it's it's confusing because, um, and I, you know, I have peers that'll tell me that I'm wrong, but I believe true account-based marketing is one-to-one. And, you know, one-to-few, again, is industry or vertical marketing, and, and one-to-many is just really good targeted B2B marketing. That's, that's my perspective. No, I mean it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a fair position, and I think it's something that a lot of let's talk ABM guests I've spoken to before hold a very similar opinion to yourself, actually. And I think the evolution of ABM obviously evolved from one to one twenty odd years ago, and even you could probably look even back further how key account management and key account marketing then obviously moved into into account based marketing. And um, I remember when I interviewed Bev uh, Burgess, who obviously coined the phrase back in 2003, I think it was, after having dinner with Accenture and Unisys, I think it was. And, and um, you know, even she says, you know, it all started like this. And obviously now technology has allowed it to, to become such a much bigger thing. But you've lost some of the, some of the essence right. al- along the way, right? Um, let's talk a bit about people. Um, I know that you mentioned before to me that trying to find the right kind of people to work in ABM can be quite difficult. And I, I, I've, I've, I have the same struggle myself, actually, in trying to, trying to find the right people. But what do you think makes a good ABMer? What, what are the right characteristics and traits? Um, I, I, I think I shared this with you in our last conversation, but the first half of my career, I was a seller. Um, I sold for IBM and Siemens, and um, I, when I came into marketing uh, and then came to Click to start the key account, which is now the, the global ABM program, you know, I took my passion and my understanding and my appreciation for sales when I developed the ABM program here. I think one of the key things that, we, that an ABMer has to have is, you know, it would be great if they've sold before, that they, quote unquote, carried the bag so that they can really appreciate what a seller's daily life is like. But if they haven't, they have to really have that passion to get to be in front of the customer, understand the customer, work with the customer. There has to be that fundamental passion. So, um, you know, I think about the skills of being able to write. You know, you've got to be able to to create a a message um, and you've got to be able to to tweak that message based on who you're talking to. Um, So, 
you know, and then for us, you know, our, our ABM programs run the gamut from display and, and social targeting to email, direct mail, events, both virtual and on site. You have to have that good fundamental marketing experience, a field, traditional field marketing experience to be able to execute all those types of different elements. So it is a unique person. Um, I've had some great people join my team who have a field marketing background. Um, but they really were passionate about being integrated into the customer experience. Um, I've had people join my team who have a field marketing background who were great executors of events, but couldn't write and really were uncomfortable writing. So you've got to find that, that, that perfect um, person, that perfect marketer who is passionate about being integrated into the sales cycle, passionate about being customer facing, and also has the fundamental skills of writing and, um, and plan, planning and execution of marketing tactics. Uh, so it's not easy to find. You gotta, you have to really find the right person. It, yeah, it's funny you say that because I remember that uh, earlier this week, I think Sangram Vajri over at Terminus did a, um, a post asking for what does he, you know, what what is required of an ABM or and I, I kind of joined in and added a few comments and it, it kind of spurred a lot of interest from people. Um, and I, I, like, I remember our conversation earlier, Nancy, that, you know, I, I come from a sales background as well. And, you know, I've eaten the bad meals. I've, I've, I've missed the last plane home. I've, you know, cried, you know, sitting there at an airport having lost a deal. And I think ABM is such a heavily commercial strategy that you need the sales guys to have confidence in you. You need to build that trust, but you also need to have that commercial acumen to know what's going to work, right? right. Yeah. I, ta- I tell my ABMers that they need to approach their accounts like they're the CMO from Click. So they need to really be um, the be all end all from messaging to you know strategy to deploying tactics. They own that from click into those accounts. They have to have the CMO headset hat on. It, they, they just do in order to make sure that they're really doing their job completely. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you. So I think that commercial acumen, that kind of full marketing set from A to Z. And I think um, a few of the guests that I've asked a very similar question to, they've said this, that um, curiosity, that you need to kind of always be asking questions about the company that you're targeting, the industries that you're working with, even it's such, you know, marketing in itself is such a fast moving discipline um, that, you know, every day you wake up and there's something new. And it's like, you know, if you if you kind of look through LinkedIn, you're thinking, God, that's amazing. I want to learn that. Or that's a new thing I want to try. So you've got to constantly, it's almost like being in a, a, a kind of laboratory scientist in a funny kind of way. And you have to be data literate, right? I mean, a lot of our platforms now, you've got to be comfortable getting in, reading and understanding data and then actioning in that data. You know, that's that's what I live in and click. I have a dashboard up every day and I'm looking at data associated with our accounts and making sure that when we see trends, when we see intent, that we're reacting and we're, you know, we're engaging based on what we're reading in the data. So uh, you have to be data literate as well. Yeah, and just one, one more point around that. I think... Um, some uh, something that makes marketers a little bit uncomfortable is 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 revenue and tying back what they do to an actual real number um, I think marketers are very happy talking about leads and MQLs and SQLs and even talking about pipeline but actually giving giving you the hard number of this campaign delivered this much money that normally is beyond a lot of marketers and I think ABM strips away there's no there's nowhere to hide right yeah. Yeah, and, and I will tell you that that's one of the ways we measure here at Click our ABM program is we actually look at, I, I call it, I have a quota, right? Because my sales background, sales doesn't like me to say that because I really don't have a quota. So we have an orders goal that we look at for each account and we aggregate that and we track it. And we make sure that we're exceeding at minimum 20% of what the, the initial account um, focus was for the year. We're always trying to grow that at least 20%. Um, and, and so you know, it, it's a different perspective from a marketing person. You know, we, we do focus on fur and we do look, look at marketing qualified and we, we, we are is always showing to make sure that we're, you know, have net new responders. We're measuring all of those typical marketing things, but we do drive towards a number. 
um, especially as you get into the second half of the year, you'll see my marketers look at data and say, these are where my biggest opportunities are. I'm going to double down to make sure we have a, we have a theme. We make sure the big deal happens and make sure it's as big as it can be. That's our team mantra. Well, it's a good mantra to have, actually. And I, I remember I was talking to Marlo Fenn, who's, who's head of ABM over at, I think you know Marlo, yeah, over I know at Fire, right? And um, he had a great quote in the, um, when, when I was speaking to him saying that when he, when the sales guys had their a quarterly review and the top three sales um, accounts are, are the same as the top three ABM accounts, then he says, you know, you're doing something right. right? Absolutely. Last, so, you know, one of the biggest challenges we go through every year is selecting the accounts. Uh, two things there. One is you need to go into developing your ABM account list. Um, along with sales and customer success, that you're all aligned on where are the top opportunities? Where do we have the biggest share of wallet to capture? And then the second thing is you need to make sure it's not just ABM that you're targeting those accounts, but you're targeting your best sellers on those accounts. You're targeting your customer success teams on those accounts. You're bringing your most technical support people to those accounts. It really is a, a family that's approaching to really drive that share of wallet. It's not just ABM on its own. No, it's a team sport. It's, yep. it's, it's, it's a team sport and there's lots of players and the coach and the, and the owners and everyone, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of people involved, right? Um, right. Just a couple more questions to finish off with, sure. Nancy. Um, let's talk about the building blocks of, of ABM. Um, you know, account selection, intent data, the account experience, um, the kind of campaign strategy. Where would you say you spend most of your time there at Click? So for me, it's more now that I'm a, a true leader, I don't have accounts anymore personally. Um, there are many years that I did just to, to grow the span, but um, I have a center of excellence. I have um, individuals who are highly technical marketers that are great um, um, writers as well um, that really run kind of what we call our always on programs. So these are things like getting the display in market and the, and the social in market, running line of business campaigns across the segments, um, you know, doing some of the programs that can, the champion nurture programs and things like that. So they kind of run that for me. And then um, each of the ABMers uh, really focus on the planning uh, the strategy, the content, and the execution. Um, I, my, my ABMers are, we're, they're, we're trying with the center of excellence to offload some of the technical aspects um, and the managing of the ABM platform partners, the tech partners, and getting them really just 100% focused on strategy, messaging, and execution. And, and is that working well for you now? It is. I, you know, um, I'd like to have more people in my center of excellence. Um, I think we could do more faster, um, but um, I do have great people there. And, and there's always more demand for account-based marketers in region. Um, it, and it really comes down to being able to show value. And so that's one of the things that we're looking to do next year is, not, is grow the COE, but also grow the number of ABMers feed on the street, if you will. Um, uh, to, to have a, the impact on more accounts. And just out of curiosity, um, what's the opinion within the business, within the C-suite of Click about ABM? I mean, you talked about word, you know, feet on the street. What's the word on the street about ABM in your organization? Um, well, I, I guess really good. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I, I um, was selected to go to President's Club um, uh, this year, which I think is an indicator that they value um, not me, but my team and how they are delivering and making an impact, how they're partnering um, with the seller and with the, the customer success, you know, organization. You know, I think that there's a true appreciation um, of really, really the partnership, the internal partnership to help drive success. Um, so th I, I think that's one thing. And I also know that um, our customers talk about, you know, oh, uh, Megan and Michelle and, and, you know, the customers don't know that they're, you know, account-based marketers. They're part of the team, right? And, you know, they're part of the click team that comes to help them drive success and, and, and accelerate ROI. So, you know, it's internally, there's a, a great deal of respect and admiration 
um, as well as more, I think more importantly, the, from the customers as well, that they appreciate the support and the engagement um, that we're doing to, to, to help the, ensure their success with Click. I love I love that last point, Nancy. Nancy, rather about the um, about how the customers are seeing your people as 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 in effect helping them to do to do their job and to be better at what they do. Really, right? Absolutely. You know, we we fundamentally believe that the more people who are using Click on a daily basis, the better that cus- that account that customer is going to be su- successful. Um, mm-hmm. And so we want to help them get Click out. We want to help them get Click using as much as possible. We want to make sure that we're helping educate, overcome fear. Um, so we, we actually have a program here Click called Click Infusion, and all it is is ABM with a customer champion sponsoring it. So we develop a strategy, a plan, a message alongside the customer to deploy ABM tactics to drive success. So we offer Click Infusion proactively to those cu- top customers, and if we can get them to join us, it just makes our job so much easier. Just just a couple of um, questions just to finish off with now. What would you say what would you say is the hardest thing about ABM? Ooh, um, I, I'd say for us, consistent account selection. So we're a data and analytics company. Um, but every year we go through this process of looking at the account list. And we have, you know, best practice in my view is the accounts stay consistent for three years and you only have about 20% that fall out every year. Mm. You know, we have regions at Click that we're really consistent and we are doing best practice, but there are some other regions where we've had sales turnover, where the account list gets looked at um, and changes out. And unless I have time, I really can't make the true impact that ABM can deliver unless I have time with that account. So, um, so that's one of the biggest challenges every year we go through. I'm excited um, that we are completely aligned with um, our new um, sales executive and, and we're prioritizing and we're focusing our, our account list for next year. And, and he is a full proponent of we need more time. It can't be, you know, a year and done or six months and done. It has to be truly looking at this is the account for the next three years. So that's the biggest challenge, but I'm feeling really positive about it right now. Good. And just the very last question, what advice would you give anyone out there who's either looking to start ABM because they haven't started yet, they've maybe come from demand gen or they've come from other other disciplines and they're looking to to launch an ABM program in their company, or perhaps they're kind of in the early stages of ABM and not everything is working working quite right. What kind of advice would you give them? Find the sellers who get it. Find two or three and partner with them and drive their success. Um, Do everything you can to help them deliver that account, deliver that that order and make it as big as it can be. You will find that once you do that for one or two or three, the word gets out. And then those naysayers or those sellers that kind of stay in the background will start to come up and say, can you help me too? So start small, focus on a couple of the reps who get it um, and, and partner with them and they'll spread your story for you. I, I, uh, I had one individual who, it, it, when I first started with my you know, initial 50 accounts, this one woman partnered with me and she's an extremely successful seller. And she it, you know, really helped me establish the program. So I highly recommend that strategy. Great advice to finish off on, Nancy. Thank you so much for being so generous with your time today and all the very best for the future. Thank you so much for the opportunity to chat. I appreciate it. Thank you. If you enjoyed this episode of Let's Talk ABM, be sure to subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted. Feel free to rate and review this podcast. Thanks so much for listening.